Well, first of all, and that's what I said just now, which is you have to validate whether you're good at it. Mm -hmm. So if at any point I would become an entrepreneur and like I would fail and lose a ton of money, I'd be like, maybe I'm not an entrepreneur. So, so the humility to not be arrogant, like in the beginning of my story, like that woman told me, if you would have been a bit more positive about it, uh, you would have get it, gotten it faster. The same thing applies to this. If you're stuck and you're like failing and it's not working, like maybe take a step back and don't be so, I'm not saying about you, I'm talking about my experience, don't be so arrogant about it. Actually look at it and is it something you should be doing? Which is something, for instance, law, right? I wanted to become a lawyer since I was six years old. And then at one point, especially when my company started growing and I, I, I ended up be procrastinating so much on this law stuff and in my free time I would do my companies. So that would be like my procrastination. And then I stepped back and I was like, is this really what I should be doing? And my, the thing that made it for me is my best friend actually ended up in a really big law firm and I saw his day to day. And, and that's where my why came in, my why to, to have freedom, to follow my passions and become the best I can be. And here I'm stepping back and I'm looking at my life. Am I gonna become a corporate lawyer? I loved corporate law, like I love everything about corporate law, but I couldn't imagine myself in that life. It was completely against my why, it completely against everything that I stood for. While I had these companies that were completely automated and I was working with all these people that I wanted to work with. We were literally working with these multinationals that if I would become a lawyer, it would take me 10 years to get there. So I stepped back and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't become a lawyer. And it wasn't easy, it really wasn't. And I had other decisions like that. Um, for instance, uh, there was a company, not a company, an organization that I founded, a national trainers team um, in, in ISEC. And for me, the national trainers team that I founded was, it was like my baby. It was like, that's the thing that I thought it would change the entire country and organization that we had. And I put a, an executive in place because I didn't have the time to run it. And a month later, I figure out that this was the worst person that could run it. And so I had two choices, whether I go in there and like make this drama and everything and like kick him out. And no, I was like, this is not according to what I should do. And I kind of stepped away and I accepted. It's not that easy, right? I had my girlfriend who was like with me and she was like, calm down, it's okay, it's okay. And it took a while, but I accepted the choices. I wasn't arrogant about it and I was very objective. And then knowing yourself, knowing my why, my code, I understood certain decisions that I shouldn't be doing that. Now, something different happens is, if, for instance, you're in a business You've proven and validated your skills are right. You're supposed to be an entrepreneur, but now the market is stagnated. So that's something different. That's when you have to reinvent yourself. And that's where I share the advice and my mentor share the advice with me, which is don't be too emotional about what you sell. So if I see the market going somewhere else, I will adapt the product. I won't change what we stand for or what we do, but I will adapt the product to kind of where the need is of the market. So if a client asks us, oh, can you do this? I'm not, so for instance, at one point Coca-Cola approached us and they asked for a commercial. But we don't, we don't really do commercials, we do like high quantity video edits and then we do the whole distribution and marketing. So this commercial popped up and I was like, oh damn. <laughs> but I accepted and we did it. So we figured out a way to do this commercial and that it ended up really good and going uh, internally over entire Coca-Cola Europe. So I'm not, I'm not like emotional about what I do. I can adapt to the needs of my clients, which is what every business and employee in my eyes should be doing. The people that get stuck and very emotional as to what they are doing, those are the people that will end up really, really bad. And I have personal examples in my life that frustrate me every day because those people are just stuck. And I'm, I'm, at one point, like, I was screaming at them, like, like, don't, like, you're losing a ton of money. 
So don't be emotional about what it is that you do. So those are like the two things about it. Uh, reinvent yourself when you're stuck, or like look back and see when you should be walking away. Uh, and the way, so where I got that attitude was when I was, remember I was approaching all these people and becoming social and everything? So the one key advice that my mentor gave me at the time is, you need to recognize when you need to walk away. And when you walk away, it's always positive. So sometimes you will go into a group of people and you'd be like, hey guys, what's up, blah, blah. And then these people would be like, what are you doing here? Like, get away. And then what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be there like, no, no, let's talk, it's totally fine. No, you're gonna be like, I'm sorry, thank you so much for your time, and you walk away. The same thing goes in, in life. So recognize when you have to walk away, and when you walk away, walk away positive. Don't walk, that's why I don't like these stories of people like, screw you boss, like boo. No, you should have recognized to walk away sooner and you should have walked away with a positive attitude because you never know if those people will become really good friends later on or business partners and stuff like that. And I've gotten business like that later on. Those people would become business partners or something like that. So that's about <clears throat> like that. Uh, stuck and remote. So for me, the remotivation part is if you listen to yourself in the market, you won't get to the point where you have to remotivate yourself because you're constantly reinventing yourself. You have to. The market is constantly like, uh, whenever I get bored in my companies, I do something else. So at this point, like I've written a book because I wanted to write a book. And then I wrote that book and I was like, so what do I do now? I was getting bored. So I started writing a second book. So you constantly reinvent yourself. And in 2017, we're gonna release a couple of books, so. <laughs> Perfect.